Almost every person on our planet, regardless of age or background, is fascinated by the future. The future fascinates us because it is full of uncertainties and possibilities. The unknown attracts us, fills us with hope, and sometimes with fear. But when it comes to technology, the future is quite predictable. In this first episode, we will not only delve into what futurology exactly entails, but also introduce the futurists who inspired us to create this series. This is the future! Our vision of the future says a lot about ourselves. It reveals much about our own beliefs, fears, and desires. In our imagination, we can envision both a utopian future full of hope and harmony, and a dystopian scenario of oppression and despair. In 1887, Edward Bellamy wrote the novel Looking Backward, 2000 to 1887. In it, he envisioned a utopian future where economic inequality in the United States had disappeared. George Orwell, who had first-hand experience with totalitarian regimes, had a less cheerful vision of the future, as evidenced by his novel 1984. In this post-war novel, he describes a future state where the government has complete control over life. Besides writers and other artists, Researchers also focus on the future by analyzing trends and developments and sketching scenarios that help us better prepare for what is to come. This study is called Futurology, a multidisciplinary field that uses scientific methods and techniques to explore and predict the future. Someone actively engaged in this study is called a futurist. We will limit ourselves in this show to techno-futurology. We will focus on developments in technology and science, but not on social and political future predictions. A prime example of a futurist who often got it right was the Dutch mathematician and astronomer Kreet Titular. Forty years ago, he predicted a future where video calling and teleconferences, mobile calling, smart homes, on-demand video, robot vacuums would be commonplace. Titula did not have a crystal ball. Many of the inventions he predicted already existed or were in development in the 1980s. With his broad knowledge of electronics, science and trends, Titula could assess what would succeed and how inventions would further develop. Titula was frequently on Dutch television. He was not always taken seriously, but he also knew that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. His scientific career began impressively. For example, he collaborated with Gerard Kuiper, after whom the Kuiper belt is named. But he had a different goal. He wanted to enthuse the Netherlands and Belgium about science, space exploration, and electronics. A completely off-topic anecdote about Crete Titula, but too fun not to mention, is the best purchase of his life. After the cancellation of the Apollo program, Crete Titula got a tour of the Rockwell factory. There he saw an unfinished Apollo capsule. He jokingly asked, How much for that capsule? One dollar? To his surprise, his offer was accepted. He shipped the capsule to the Netherlands and had something fun to place in his garden. Arthur C. Clarke was a futurist best known as the author of the novel 2001, A Space Odyssey. As early as the 1950s, he made predictions about artificial intelligence, the internet, and wireless communication. His view of the future and technology can be summarized with the three laws of Arthur C. Clarke. The first law. When a distinguished but elderly scientist states that something is possible, he is almost certainly right. 
when he states that something is impossible, he is very probably wrong. The second law. The only way of discovering the limits of the possible is to venture a little way past them into the impossible. The third law. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. History has since proven that Arthur C. Clarke was right and probably always will be. Nowadays, with the right app, you can take a picture of a page of text with any smartphone, detect the letters, and have the page read to you in a digital voice. You can also convert your voice into text. Raymond Kurzweil was at the forefront of these inventions 48 years ago. In 1976, he built a reading machine that could recognize letters and read books aloud for the blind using a digital voice. As a teenager in the 1960s, Kurzweil gained media attention for building a machine that could recognize patterns in classical music and compose new pieces in the style of the composer without human intervention. He was only 16 years old. What are these uh, black things over here, Raymond? Well, those are relays. Mm -hmm. That's what does to That's the right to music. I see. The relays write the music. They feed it into this uh, white cheese box here. Kurzweil is also a key pioneer in digital music. In 1982, he founded a company that brought a synthesizer to the market that could mimic musical instruments most realistically at that time. He co-founded this company with another genius, Stevie Wonder. What might be even more interesting about Kurzweil than his inventions is his vision of the future. He has proven not to be a fantasist and has repeatedly been right. For instance, he predicted the iPhone era when phones were still bricks with snake. In the 1990s, he envisioned portable devices with capabilities such as real-time access to information, communication, and entertainment. But what can we expect in the future? Kurzweil believes that at some point in history, there will be a moment when artificial intelligence will be able to improve itself without human intervention, leading to an explosion of unpredictable changes in society. He calls this point the singularity. In 2005, he predicted that the singularity would occur in 2045 and that by then we would become immortal because we could live on in the cloud. In the words of Marty McFly. Whoa, this is heavy. Of course, there are many more pioneers and theories, and some will be addressed in future episodes. In the upcoming episodes, we will focus on one topic at a time. What can we expect from smart contact lenses? Will there ever be devices that can record dreams? What is cultured meat? Will keyboards disappear? If you want answers to these questions, subscribe and don't forget to watch the next episode. See, See you in, in the, the future. future.